Hi and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn and today I have two beers that really don't make their way to Chicago very often. Um, that is because they are from Seattle or the uh, Seattle, Washington area and pretty much no beer from there makes it to Chicago or for that matter really anywhere outside of that immediate area. It's kind of ironic. It seems that Seattle was a little bit late to the scene especially in Pacific Northwest terms, but they are following very much in the footsteps of Portland, which is probably the brew pub, not probably is, the brew pub capital of the country, maybe the world, and has tons and tons of breweries, most of which do not see the light of day outside their own local area. I think that is actually really, really cool that so many great breweries, can, and they are great, it's not just that nobody wants to drink these beers, it's that everybody locally wants to drink these beers and they have no need to expand beyond the immediate area. The Portland people especially are pretty notorious for being very adamant about drinking local and they support their local breweries and they don't, those breweries really are able to then stay in that immediate vicinity. And like I said, the Seattle, Washington area breweries are doing very much the same thing. So there's some great beer being made there, but you have to go there to get it or have somebody bring you some, which is what happened uh, in the case of these two beers, a gentleman by the name of Paul from Cascade Maltings, uh, an up and coming artisanal for malting company uh, based in the Washington State, Seattle-ish area, uh, stopped by and I had a chat with him and he dropped off these two beers. It was very uh, nice of him to do that and he said that these are two really nice beers that people are drinking in the Seattle area and uh, asked if uh, I was interested in trying them and I certainly was. So very cool. Uh, really as I looked at the at the uh, the beers themselves are both fresh, by the way. Uh, they have really neat stories behind both of them, and I'm going to start with this one. Uh, Bale Breaker Brewing Company, just about a year old. It's now May 2014. They started in April 2013, but it's a brewery started by a bunch of hop farmers who have been doing this, or their family has been doing it since Prohibition times. So very much in tune and accustomed to the brewing scene and certainly hop growing and stuff like that. And even more interesting to me is that the brew pub or the brewery is located basically right in the middle of a hop field. So how cool is that to visit a brewery and actually be in a hop field as well? Um, Yakima Valley is one of the biggest hop growing regions in the country slash in the world. And hey, I mean, they're, they're just going for it and opening up a brewery and certainly are going to have some pretty kick-ass fresh hop beers, I would think. Uh, so this is their uh, Top Cutter India Pale Ale, uh, West Coast IPA. Um, and uh, let's give this a shot. Uh, really cool picture of a, basically, a, a hop harvesting machine, I guess called a Top Cutter. Uh, it says fresh off the farm here, uh, just under 7% alcohol. I can smell the beer already. Really nice uh, color to it, uh, kind of a, an, a golden orange color. Nice bit of uh, foam here. Kind of an orange and uh, like ruby grapefruit thing here. It's going to make me sneeze. Achoo! Excuse me. Excuse me. Whew. My apologies. Now I probably have like a booger hanging. Um, anyway, really nice uh, uh, orange, and I'm getting the combination of the, the orange from the citrus and some of that orangey, biscuity malt. Uh, sweet malt is giving me that marmalade flavor as well. A little bit of just bright green, uh, almost floral notes to it. Not grass, but just kind of green freshness. A little bit of grain as well. Goes down real easy, especially for 7%, kind of dangerous. A 
There certainly is a little bit of kind of biscuity malt there, not quite biscuity, but just a little bit of sweet marmalady notes from it. Uh, balanced pretty well by an aggressive hop bill. Does it say, yeah, 70 IBUs, that's, that's pretty strong. But the, the bitterness is tamed by that malt as well. As I've said many, many times, it's not just about how much bitterness you have, it's about how much bitterness you have in relation to how much malt sweetness you have. So although it is 70 IBU that is quite bitter, there's enough malt there to kind of keep that bitterness in check. So as you're drinking it, you know, classic IPA style, it starts off with the, uh, the hops, you're getting those really nice um, great grapefruit peel and green kind of fresh flower notes followed almost immediately by a subtle and kind of building bitterness. Uh, at first you do get some of that malt sweetness and then as the sweetness kind of dies out the bitterness kind of becomes more and more prominent. Really nice beer. Um, yeah, just a solid kind of go-to six-pack beer uh, that I would certainly, you know, reach for or order if I was in, uh, in the area. So really cool, interesting story, and a fun beer to have. All right, on to Fremont Brewing. And the, this is their uh, Imperial IPA, 8.5%. It's called the Brother Imperial IPA. Uh, let's see if I can find, yeah, these guys are literally in Seattle, Washington. And interesting story about this is the owner of the brewery wanted to make a really nice sessionable beer that he could drink day in and day out. And it took him, according to his own words, eight years to develop that beer. And once he did, he figured, well, man, it took me this long and I finally made this beer that I love so much, I wanna share it with everybody else, more or less. And I kind of always wanted to open a brewery, so he did. And uh, yeah, it was called Universe Ale. Uh, I think because they say Fremont, I guess the, uh, the local saying is Fremont is the center of the universe, so Universe Ale is their uh, flagship pale ale. Uh, like I said before, this is the Brother Imperial IPA. Um, uh, apparently this is a, a big, big hop monster. It's got, I think, Chinook, Centennial, Amarillo, um, Columbus, a whole bunch of hops in here. And according to the write-up on their website, you know, very much front-loaded, middle-loaded, end-loaded all about hops here. So we'll uh, see if they follow through on that. A little bit lighter than the previous beer, but still has that golden orange color. Again, really nice, fine, uh, foamy bubbles here. And you know, does the foam really matter? Uh, you know, aesthetically it does. In some ways you drink with your eyes. And I like to see a beer with a nice bit of uh, uh, foam on, on the head. So, you know, really nice, clear beer, attractive looking. Much more, you know, dank, quote unquote, than the uh, top cutter. I, um, I might be from that Chinook, uh, but I'm, I'm getting a, a real nice amount of that kind of chivey green onion thing. Um, you know, bordering on garlicky um, onion grass. In addition to that, there's a really wonderful, uh, almost pungent tropical note to it as well. I can't really pick out a specific fruit here, but there is an underlying tropical note to it. A lot of times with those oniony beers, they go more herbal or even woody, piney. Uh, this one is, you know, kind of tropical. Really interesting, and you know, a hop profile that is not for everyone, but I personally and, and lately especially have been into. So this is a beer that I would find myself sniffing and sniffing and sniffing. Uh, I find that um, beers that I really like, I, I tend to find myself smelling for much longer before I actually try it. Um, really nice. Uh, I'm getting a lot more grapefruit now, but it's yellow grapefruit. Um, just like a, a really fresh, just cut into white grapefruit. Really nice. 
even hints of like bubble gum or candy. Hops here, coat your mouth. That candied sweetness definitely comes through. It's the flavor uh, of candy more than the actual sticky, sweet, caramelly note of it. Um, the malt here definitely always supporting the hops where I'm getting malt and hops in some beers. This one, you, you definitely get the malt, but it's just there to support the hops. And there certainly is a good amount of, of malt there. I think there's actually some wheat here as well. And as you first uh, uh, sip this beer, you're getting those same aromatics and then a kind of goes into, just as it's starting to get sweet, it becomes that nice grapefruit flavor where before it was that oniony flavor into that grapefruit and then really transitions smoothly. The sweetness there is where it kind of kicks in and the in onset of kind of the bitterness is much, much, much slower and much later. Or even now as I'm talking, it's just starting to kind of come in, uh, making this beer even more deadly at 8.5%. Really nice beer. This is definitely a beer that I would uh, search out. The Brother Imperial IPA. Very well done. Thanks a lot, Paul. Mm. I mean, really, really good stuff. Um, it's a shame I only have this one can left. Uh, there you have it, guys. The Brother Imperial IPA from Fremont Brewing in Seattle, Washington and Top Cutter IPA from Bale Breaker Brewing Company in, I think, Yakima, Washington. Uh, really solid beers, loving this one. Uh, I don't know if this is as universally enjoyable as this one, but to my palate, I'm digging this right now. Um, guys, if you're ever up in the area or if you have means to get some of the beers from that area, I definitely recommend you trying some of the local stuff. Beer is something that, you know, Distribution is increasing, but there is still a lot of locality and regionality to beer, and I think that's a good thing. I like that you can go to certain areas and only get the beers that are made there. Uh, it, it's not as fun when you can go everywhere and get the same beer everywhere. You want to have some variety and, and local flavor to things. So Seattle is very much keeping that alive, and that's really cool. Uh, guys, thank you so much as always. Keep the uh, comments coming in and uh, the emails and if you could rate or review the podcast on iTunes that is always very very much appreciated thank you so much guys uh, until next time I've got some great Washington State IPAs to drink and uh, I really hope that you do too go out and find some of these guys cheers <laughs>